Alrighty, hello and welcome back. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to solve these things called systems through graphing, right? So we've talked about all these different types of linear equations and we've learned how to graph all of them. This is one of the situations where knowing all these different forms might be kind of helpful. So what is a system? Let's start with that. So a system is when you're trying to solve multiple equations at the same time, basically. A system is a set of equations or sometimes inequalities combined by and, right? And when we say and, all it really means is that it's this little curly brace symbol, right? I know that the one with the font isn't as nice as something like that, right? But it's basically saying like this equation and this other one that we want to try and solve at the same time. And a solution to a system is going to be just an ordered pair. It's going to have an X and a Y, and it's going to make the entire system true, right? So it's going to solve both equations for us at the same time, right? So one way that we can solve systems is we can just check individual points, right? So we have the system here, Y equals 3X minus 7, and 2Y minus 2X equals 10. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to check these two points, right? So let's start off with this first one, 6, 11. So 6 is the X part and 11 is the y, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of those equations, right? y equals 3x minus 7. And all we're going to do is we're going to plug in those values of x and y. So y is 11, so I'm going to plug in 11. x is 6, so I'm going to do turn that into 3 times 6. And we're just going to see what happens, right? So let's simplify this. 11 is still 11. 3 times 6 is 18. And then 18 minus 7 is 11. Right? So what we just found out is that 611 works, right? It comes out as true for that first equation. That's a good thing. Right? Now let's try out 611 on the second equation as well, right? 2y minus 2x equals 10. Again, what I'm going to start off by doing is just plugging in those values, right? So 2 times y is now 2 times 11 minus 2 times x, which is now 6. Let's see what happens here, right? 2 times 11 is 22. 2 times 6 is 12. And 22 minus 12 is also just 10, right? So 10 equals 10. That sounds true to me, right? So what this is telling us is that 611 is a point that solves both of those equations at the same time, right? So 611 is a solution to this system, right? Let's try it out again with this other point here, 1, negative 4. Right, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so we can see everything at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test those same two equations, right? y equals 3x minus 7. When I go ahead and plug that in, it's the same deal as before, right? Except now my y is negative 4. And my x was just regular old 1. So let's see what happens. Negative 4 is equal to 3 times 1 is 3. And then 3 minus 7 over there gives us negative 4, right? Cool. So that part works. However, we can't get ahead of ourselves, right? On that first point, 611 with the red, we tested out both equations to see if it solves both of them, right? We don't want to just say, oh, it's a solution because it works for one of them. We still need to test out that other equation here. All right, so we got 2y minus 2x equals 10. Oops, e equals 10. <laughs> and again, I want to plug in that x and that y from this point. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit further. So y is negative 4, so this will turn into 2 times negative 4. x is 1, so this will be 2 times 1. Let's see what happens here. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 2 times 1 is 2. And then negative 8 minus 2 more brings us to negative 10. And I don't know about you guys, but last time I checked, negative 10 does not equal regular 10. Right? This one does not work. So that's telling us is that, you know, the red point, since it worked for both parts of our system, is a solution to the system. The blue point, since it only worked for one of the equations in that system, is not a solution to the entire thing. Right? You need to be able to make both parts true. So, you know, again, checking points is a way that you could theoretically solve a system. 
The only problem is that if you think about a graph, there are infinitely many points that you would have to check. Right? We would be at this for literally the rest of time and space and like the universe, which, you know, like it would it would take us forever, literal forever. Right? So what we have is we have a different way of solving these systems, and that's by graphing, right? If we graph them, then we have a visual representation of all the points, right? And what, make, what that does is it makes it a lot easier to figure out what the solution is, right? So these are our steps, right? Two of them look, well, <laughs> basically all three of them look pretty familiar, right? We're going to start by plotting whatever y-intercept we have, right? Or if we have a point-slope equation, we'll start with that point. Then we use our slope and we use rise over run to get ourselves a second point somewhere along the line. And then we just connect them. We graph the lines. And then the important part here is that the solution to our system is where those lines intersect. Right? Because if you think about it, every point on a line works. Right? Every ordered pair on a line is an X and a Y that like works out for that equation. So if you find the point that they intersect, that means that that is a point that works for both equations, which is what we want in a solution. All right, so let's go ahead, let's try out these systems by graphing. All right, so that first one, x plus y equals 10, Oy, well already we have something that's in standard form, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag that over here, x plus y equals 10. And to graph that a little bit more easily, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve it for y Right, and that's going to help me graph it because it'll be in slope-intercept form at that point. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract x from both sides. All right, hopefully seems pretty familiar from what we were doing last lesson with converting linear equations. So those x's are gone. I've got just a y. And then over on the other side, I'm going to do that kind of weird thing again. I'm going to put that minus x out in front. And then we had a positive 10, so I'm going to say plus 10. Okay. So when we have minus x, right, there's really a little 1 there that we don't really write, but it is, does still exist. It's telling me that my slope is negative 1. All right, so, you know, just to kind of, might be a little bit easier to kind of recap it this way. Oops, without dragging the page around. My slope on this one is negative 1 over 1. My y-intercept is 10. All right, so that's giving me the information I need to graph that first line. All right, so my y-intercept is way up at positive 10. My slope's telling me to go down one and over one, all right, right to there. And then that's going to help us graph this line, right? So what we'll do is we'll take a ruler or some kind of straight edge and line it all up. All right, and then zoop, there we go. A little crooked here and there, but overall not bad at all. All right, so that is that first equation there. Now what we got to do is we got to do the same thing for the second equation. We're going to graph it on this same line. All right, so this negative 5, that's my y-intercept. My slope is, again, like a little invisible 1. All right, so my slope is 1 over 1, right? So up 1 over 1. So what this is telling me to do is I'm going to start down at negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down there on the y-axis. And then my slope is up 1 over 1. So it'll spit me out to a second point right there. All right, so again, all I'm going to do, I'm going to line my ruler up all nice. Give it a zoop right through there, and it's pretty darn close. You know, it's not perfect. What we could do is we could make those dots a little bit bigger, and then, oh, look at that, it's perfect, right? So what we have here is that our solution is where those two lines intersect, right? So our solution is right in there. But on this one, you might notice that we got kind of an issue. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Our solution point is, like, between different dots on here, right? So that's why, like, this, this method is not absolutely foolproof, right? You might have noticed with that red line that my ruler was a little bit off when I drew that line. Right? But what graphing does is it's a nice, quick, and easy way to get an idea of what our answer is. Right? So for what we're going to be doing, you know, for graphing them by hand, what I'm going to do is we're going to accept some, pretty, some, pretty, uh, some answers that might not be entirely accurate, but as long as they're in the right neighborhood, then we're most, more or less fine. We can use technology, and that is something that we will do in order to get more exact answers from these, right? But in this one, what I'm seeing is that it looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 and a half, right? So my answer is 7.5, comma, and it looks like it's up 2.5, right? So that's not so bad. 
7.5, 2.5. If I plugged those in, they very well might work for this equation here. All right. What we could do is we could then take those values, that x and that y, plug them in and check. But I'm going to be honest with you, you know, we're not really going to worry about that too much. It is kind of a bore to do, right? But again, what we're really focused on is graph the lines. Where they intersect is your solution. Okay. Let's try another one out. All right, so again, we'll graph this first line. Y equals 4x minus 11. All right, so that's telling me that my y-intercept is at negative 11. My slope is up 4 over 1. All right, and already I'm seeing a bit of an issue. So if my y-intercept's at negative 11, you might notice that our graph doesn't go to negative 11. Right, so again, this is another point where, you know, graphing is not always the most accurate, but it'll do. And so what we're going to have is I'm going to add an 11th spot down there, and we're going to start right at that point. Right, looks about right. My slope is 4, so I'm going to go up 4 and over 1 from that point. 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. And again, what we're going to do from here is we are going to just connect our two points with a line as best we can. Not too shabby. All right, so that one's done. Now we got to go ahead and give this second one a go. All right, so again, we've got one that's in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spit it out over here just so we have some room to convert it. I'm going to get 5x plus 2y equals 4. All right, so in order to convert this again, what I want to do is I want to get that y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides to move those on over. And again, we're going to have that kind of weird thing go on where I'm going to put those x's out in front. Apparently, I'm going to switch to the laser pointer by accident. All right, so that negative 5x will be in front of a positive 4, so we'll say plus 4 there. Right. After that, to get that y entirely by itself, I need to get rid of that 2. All right, so we're going to divide by 2. Every last thing there. All right, so those 2s are gone on the y side. It's just y. Negative 5 over 2 is just negative 5 over 2, right? We don't need to get any fancier than that with an x attached. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. All right, so what that's giving me is that now I have my slope, negative 5 halves, and I have my y-intercept, positive 2. So I'm going to start up at positive 2, and then I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2 to get a second point there. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so it's a little easier to graph for me. And we are going to line things up all nicely. Zoop, just like that. And oh man, this actually looks pretty easy to figure out where the solution is, right? It's right where they cross, which seems to be that point that we just graphed. Right? So the solution here looks like it's at 2, negative 3. Right? So... You know, hopefully this doesn't seem so bad, right? We're taking what we've learned already, right? Graphing different types of linear equations, and we're just graphing two of them and seeing where they cross, and that's really it. All right, so on calculators, right? You know, again, I was mentioning that we can use technology to kind of work through these as well. So the directions on the screen right now up at the top there, Right, that describes how to graph them on like a regular graphing calculator, right? Like a like a TI-84 plus silver edition like we would have in normal years. But since we're doing things on the computer a lot, what we're going to do is we're going to use a site called Desmos, which we've done a couple activities on generally by this point in the trimester. So if you go to desmos.com slash calculator, what it'll do is it'll bring you to a big graphing calculator. It'll have some space on the side where you can type in your equations and all that good stuff. All right, so... Before we hop into that part, there are a couple different ways we can write our answers to these types of systems. We can write them as ordered pairs with just an X and a Y, right? So it's like, oh yeah, the answer is negative, or uh, 2, negative 3, just like that last one we were working on, right? You could also write them as separate values where it's X equals a number and Y equals another number, right? So it would be like X equals 2, comma, Y equals 3. Or kind of a mishmash of both, which this one's my favorite xy, the ordered pair, is equal to one number and then the other number, right? Um, the reason I like that last one is because, you know, say you're working with a system that doesn't necessarily have x and y, right? Say it has, like, p and q, right? You might not be entirely sure which one should come first, right? So if you kind of say, like, oh, yeah, 
it's P then Q for this one, right? Then you can plug in two, negative three, right? So it makes things a little bit clearer, right? But any of these is really fine at the end of the day. All right, so again, if you need to pause for a second, open up a new tab, do that. Go to desmos.com slash calculator, and let's try this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the solution to this system on the calculator. So what I have is I have Desmos already loaded up here. I know the mine looks a little bit different because it's kind of like picture in picture here. But at the end of the day, it's the same tool. So what we're going to do is in our first line, what we're going to, all we're going to do is we are going to plug in y equals... Oops, y equals negative x plus 4, right? And you'll notice that as you type things in, it'll kind of start jumping around on you, right? So what it's doing is it's like instantly graphing whatever you're throwing in there, right? So if I graphed negative x plus 4, that's what my line would look like, right? If you then click right below it, it'll open up a second one. You can also open up a third and a fourth and whatever. We're just going to go with 2. Right. On the second one, we'll type in that other equation. y equals negative x minus 2. All right. and what that does is now we have two different lines on there. So what I'm going to do is I you know, kind of put mine away so that I can kind of show you a little bit more on the graph itself. So graph on the calculator. Done. We did it. So how many points of intersection do you find? So where, do the, where does the red line and the blue line cross? And oh dear, you can see I'm zooming way out, right? Like my, my x and y axes are going up by 100 for every little like bit of measurement there. Oh man, if I zoom out to like negative 5,000, right? Then maybe they kind of cross, right? But if I zoom back in, I can see the truth. Oops, I did something a little weird there. Oh dear. <laughs> right, what we're noticing though is that these lines don't cross. So how many intersection points are there? None. Right? So then we have a name for these types of lines that we've just graphed here. Right? And the name is that they are parallel lines. Right? So parallel lines will never cross each other, right? They kind of it's like the lines in the middle of the road. Right? If you imagine like a highway out in like New Mexico. And those two yellow lines in the middle of the road just never touch. They just keep on going in the same direction. Right? The slopes of these lines are both negative 1. Right? We could have a little invisible 1 on each of those to represent the slope. So this little note down here is that parallel lines have the same slope. And never cross. So these lines, no matter how far I zoomed out or in or whatever, right, are never going to cross each other. They have the same slope. They're changing at the same rate, and they're never going to touch. Right? So whenever you have a system, right, this is one of the special cases you might have. You might have parallel lines, and then there's no solution to this, in a, to this system here. All right, let's try another one out. All right, so let me see if I can figure out how to delete. Oh, there we go. All right. So on this one, you know, the nice thing about Desmos is that you can type in your equation that's in standard form still, right? So 8x plus 4y equals 16 is going to graph that right there for us with the red. All right, so that's kind of nice. You don't need to convert, which is pretty nifty. For the other one, we have y equals negative 2x plus 4. Uh-oh, weird. The red line just disappeared in favor of the blue line. Right, so something you can do on the computer with Desmos is that if you click these, like, the red and blue dots next to my equations that I just typed in, you can kind of hide them and make them reappear, right? So it's like I just, t I can turn the blue one on and off. And what we're noticing is that it's right on top of the red line, right? So the red line's there, the blue line is in the same spot. So if I kind of keep flipping back and forth, we're going to notice that they are the same line. So when we're asked to find the solution to this system, right, what we would actually say is that there are infinitely many solutions. Right, because if I'm thinking about, you know, the solution is where the two lines cross each other, 
these ones cross each other at every single point they have. Right? I can zoom way in if you don't believe me as well. Right? Let's zoom way in on just this part. Right? So you notice on the scale, right? I'm going from 2.1 to 2.12 to 2.14 on the, on the y-axis. Going from 0.92 to 0.94 to 0.96 on the x. And these lines are still the exact same as one another. All right? So there are infinitely many solutions, right? They cross at every single point that they have. Right? And we have a special name for these types of lines, right? So parallel lines are the ones that never cross. These type of lines that cross everywhere, we, are, we call them coincident lines. Right? Because you know whenever somebody, like you run into somebody at the grocery store, Maybe not now, but, you know, <laughs> in normal times, you run into somebody at the grocery store and it's like, oh, what a coincidence running into you here, right? Coincident means that you're just meeting each other at a spot, right? And in this case, coincident means that you're meeting it at every single spot it has, right? So these are two special cases that you might come across, right? Parallel lines where they never intersect, they have the same slope. Sometimes you'll also run into ones where there are infinitely many solutions because they're at the same line at the end of the day. Okay. So we got a couple of different examples here, and then we're already done, right? So we got three different examples. What I would like you to do is actually try this first one out on your own, right? There's two equations that are in slope-intercept form. Right? Try graphing them by hand first. If you need to check your work on Desmos to see if you were right, not a bad idea. So hopefully you did that. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on here real quick just to get my information all set. All right, so one line I'm going to do in red, the other one I'll do in blue. So the one in red has a slope of 2, which is kind of like 2 over 1, has a y-intercept of negative 3. All right, so over on my graph, all right, I'm going to start down at negative 3 for my y-intercept. My slope was positive 2. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 1 to get a second point there. All right, and then after that, just a matter of taking a ruler or some kind of straight edge and just zoop right on through. That's our first line. Okay. The second line there, right, same kind of idea, right? It's got a slope of negative 3 over 1, and then it's got a y-intercept at positive 2. I'm going to start up at positive 2. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and go over 1, which is actually going to be the same as that red point there. And again, we're just going to go ahead, line things up as best we can, and graph that line. Okay, so on this one, <laughs> the solution's pretty easy because it's a point that we had to graph for both of them. So my solution is right here. It's at 1, negative 1. Okay, so something I do want to show you guys is that on Desmos, one way that you can check your work, right? You remember I was saying that like we can get more exact if we have technology to help us out? All right, so let me type these two in, right? We've got y equals 2x, oops, 2x minus 3. The second one is y equals negative 3x plus 2, all right? So on our graph itself, right, if I zoom in a little bit, I can click right where they cross, and it'll give me what that point is, right? It'll also give me, like, that point there where we had our y-intercept. It'll give me an x-intercept if I want to do that, all right? And if you just click again, it'll remove that label, right? But what this is helpful for is that, you know, we had that problem that we started off with with the graphing, and we were like, oh, it's seven and a half, two and a half, more or less, right? This can give you exact answers, right? Just like this, where, you know, sometimes they might not be the nicest of numbers, right? But if you click where they cross, it'll give you an exact answer for that. Oops. There we go. All right. For the second one, Right, kind of the same idea, right? So if you were, f if you tried number five on your own and it went fine, maybe try number six as well. If you didn't try number five on your own, maybe try this one out, right? So pause here, give it a shot. All right, so let's give it a go. So again, first line, it's got a slope of negative one fourth, a y-intercept of three. 
Second one has a slope of negative 3 halves and a y-intercept at negative 2. Okay, so that red line, right, starting up at 3, my slope is telling me to go down 1 and over 4. Get my second point right over there. Just to warn you guys, I am going to zoom in and out just to kind of be able to graph these a little bit more easily. All right, so pop that red line in there for that first equation. Second equation starts at negative 2, that's the y-intercept, and it goes down 3 over 2 for the slope. So I'll start at negative 2. My slopes tell me to go down 3 and over 2. Get a second point there. Let's connect these up and see what we got. Alright, so when I'm looking for my intersection, it's right over here. What it looks like is it looks like negative 4, positive 4, right? My Again, my ruler might be a little bit off, so we're not right at that dot there, right? But we're pretty darn close. So I betcha if I plugged this into Desmos, right, and took a look, that we would find that it's actually the exact same answer as what, as what I just guessed there. All right, so y equals negative 1 fourth x plus 3. We've also got y equals negative 3 halves x minus 2. Um, on Desmos, it does let you throw fractions right in there. So whenever you try to divide, it'll turn it into a fraction for you, which is nice. To get out of the bottom of a fraction or to move around in it, you can use your left and right arrow keys. All right, so these are our two lines. Looks pretty darn similar to what I had. Whew, go me. And again, if I click on where they cross, oops, maybe. There we go. Whoo, negative four, positive four. Is just what I was saying would probably be the answer. Not too bad. All right, so, you know, plugging it into the computer is quite a bit easier, right now, and it's much faster and everything else. All right, but being able to graph these by hand is also a pretty valuable skill because, you know, sometimes calculators, like, we're not as smart, or, uh, <laughs> excuse me, calculators are not as smart as we are. Calculators are dumb. They can only do what we tell them to, and sometimes when we're trying to tell them to do things, they don't get it right. Right? So being able to graph these by hand is sometimes more trustworthy than a calculator would be. Last but not least, we got these two equations, and unfortunately they're both in standard form. So we have some converting to do. All right, so I'm going to convert one at a time. So 2x plus 3y equals negative 12. Might not be a bad point to, you know, if you want to practice some converting, pause here, try it out, see if you get the same thing that I did. Right? So, what I'm going to do is I want to get that y by itself, so I'm going to move that 2x over to the other side. All right, so those 2x's are gone, I'm left with 3y. And then on the other side, what we've got is negative 2x minus 12. Okay. After that, what we need to do is we still need to get rid of that 3 that's attached to the y. So we're going to divide everything by 3. We do that, those threes are gone. We're left with just y. All right. Over on the other side, we have negative 2 divided by 3. Let's just leave it as that. All right. And then negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. All right. So something you might notice I'm doing is that whenever we have a fraction as the slope, we just leave it that way, right? Because it gives us a rise and a run. So that works out pretty okay. As far as the y-intercept, though, if we can simplify that to be just a number, that's much better because then that really gives us a solid starting point on our y-axis. Okay, so with that one, you know, we just found that negative two-thirds is our slope, negative four is our y-intercept. All right, so if you wanted to pause and graph here, you know, that's fine. I like to get them both converted and out of the way first before doing that. So this other one, 5x minus 3y equals negative 9. Same deal. All I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get that y by itself. So first step is I'm going to move those x's over away from where the y's are. All right, so those x's are gone. We're left with negative 3y. Now on the other side, again, smushing that x 
those x's in front of that negative 9. Okay. After that, we've got to get rid of that negative 3, so let's divide everything by that negative 3 in order to get rid of it. Okay. So, negative 3's are gone, we get just a y. Negative 5 divided by negative 3, we are going to leave as a fraction, but something we can do is that because both parts are negative, they kind of cancel each other out, so we'll have positive 5 thirds there. Last but not least, negative 9 divided by negative 3 turns into positive 3. All right, so again, we have our slope of 5 thirds. We have our y-intercept at 3. Let's see what we get. So, for the red line, we're going to start down at negative 4. My slope's telling me to go down 2 more and then over 3. Spit myself out there. All right, so we will take a ruler and connect those as best we can. Then we'll move on to the blue one. All right, so we're going to start up at positive 3. And that's telling us to go up 5 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 3 to there. And yeah, we're just going to take a ruler, connect them up. And then we'll see where we get spit out. All right. So again... My intersection point looks like it's about there, right? And again, if I zoom way in, we are not really directly on top of that one dot there, right? We are a little bit off. But most of the time, at least for what we're going to be doing in class, right, we're going to be working with mostly, like, nice round numbers. So what we would say is that our answer is most likely negative 3, negative 2. Again, if you're worried like me a little bit sometimes, about that being correct, plop it into Desmos, see what happens. So we have 2x, oops, 2x plus 3y equals negative 12, All right? Oops, negative 12, thank you, All right? And this is also actually a good chance to, you know, see like, all right, did I convert correctly? Did I then do my slope intercept form correctly? You know, check and make sure that it works out the same as what you ended up graphing. Second equation is 5x minus 3y. 3y. It's not very happy with me today. Equals negative 9. All right, and again, if I click that point where they cross each other, negative 3, negative 2, whoa, bam. There we go. Look at me go. All right. And that's it, right? That's really all we're doing is we have two equations, we're graphing them, we're checking to see where they overlap, and that is the solution that works for both of them at the same time, all right? So be sure to check on Google Classroom for any additional stuff I might have you doing. Be sure to ask questions when you see me in person if you're a little shaky on any of this, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.